So there's a lot of talk about parallelism in the cell matrix, and in reality, parallelism rarely works. So why is it any different with the cell matrix? Well, there's a few reasons. Basic parallelism is a sound idea. If it takes a person an hour to do something, you can get 3,600 people and do it in a second. What kills you is the overhead, the communication among the different, the different um, nodes that are working on this task, the ability to break your job down into such small pieces, the necessity to maybe take the results of those individual pieces and put them together. Those are things that all kill your parallelism. But certainly some problems, the so-called embarrassingly parallel problems, can be divided down and distributed across a large number of processors. But our goal is not necessarily to take every problem in the world and turn it into a parallel problem and then execute it on the cell matrix in record time. The goal is that we can take advantage of the parallelism for some very real problems that we would run into in dealing with a large-scale cell matrix. For example, in bootstrapping. You want to configure a set of cells to some initial configuration. If you have a trillion trillion cells and you try to do this one cell at a time, it takes you 10 to the 24th operations. Even at a very fast clock rate for how long it takes to do one cell configuration, the total time is going to be huge. But since you have to build your own bootstrap system, you can build a parallel bootstrap system that configures all of your 10 to the 24th cells simultaneously, and then your bootstrap time is trivial. The trick there is how do you build this parallel configuration system, because that itself requires bootstrapping the system. But what you do is you build a 2D configuration system that will bootstrap a 2D plane of the matrix in parallel, and now you use that 100 million times to bootstrap the z-axis worth of cells. And now the trick is how do you build this two-dimensional bootstrap system which itself contains 10 to the 16th cells, how do you build that efficiently? Well, you build a one-dimensional bootstrap system which takes you 100 million steps, but then you use that to, in each subsequent step, bootstrap another 100 million cells. And now after 200 million steps, you bootstrap an entire 2D plane containing 10 to the 16th cells. So that's an example of where we can take advantage of the parallelism because the problems that we're trying to solve, problems like how do you bootstrap the system, how do you check the system for defects, how do you monitor system activity and look for certain conditions that can be occurring, anywhere throughout your system, those things are embarrassingly parallel. They're very local operations, and they suit themselves really well to a parallel solution. Um, the other aspect of parallelism in the cell matrix is that as the system scales up, the control of the system also scales up, because the things that are controlling the cells are the cells themselves. So if we move from a million cells to a billion cells, we've moved from a million potential control points to a billion control points, from a million points we can monitor to a billion points we can monitor, from a million circuits that can bootstrap our system to a billion circuits that can bootstrap our system. And our control over the system scales up as the complexity of the system scales up. And since these move together, theoretically, we can scale up the system as far as we want. And if we're smart about how we do it, we can maintain control over the system and avoid the overhead that kills most parallel systems. Thank you.